Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar about Green Factor IT. My name is Greg, and I will be your moderator. Together with our speakers, we will, fo we will focus on the Green Factor IT topic. Uh, let me introduce you to Paul Dipstraten, Marcus Ampoli, Grace Yu, and Frank Leff, who will be describing uh, you today some topics inside the Green Factor IT. Um, on our webinar, we will uh, focus on the in introduction of the Green IT by Paul. We will talk about IPCs and industrial servers platforms with Grace. Uh, we will ask the questions about profitability of uh, Green IT uh, together with Mark. Uh, and Frank will tell you a little bit about energy efficient Ethernet. Uh, versus uh, green Ethernet. Okay, let me pass uh, the voice to Paul Dipstraten, who's the product sales director in Advantage Europe. Paul, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Greg, for your introduction. Next slide, please, Greg. Thank you. Today, the smart factory is playing an increasingly important role in the world economy. The fourth industrial revolution has started just recently. Industry 4.0 relies on sophisticated software to optimize the production flow, interacting with machines that communicate with each other. This new era of cyber physical systems is requiring a high demand of real time industrial computing platforms and the flexibility in factory ICT infrastructure for production data and machine data acquisition. From this diagram, you can see that discrete, hybrid, and process manufacturing, including utilities, will share over 70% of the investments in the factory and machine automation market. Next slide, please, Greg. Let's talk about some facts. The number of computers and data centers has increased over 600% in the last 10 years. Up to 30 million PCs and servers have been installed. The energy requirement for data centers has doubled the last five years. Most of it came from installing a large number of servers for the IT infrastructure. No matter what is the size and the nature of the enterprise, the data center with the related ICT infrastructure is a big contributor to the ECO footprint trend. Today, this sector is responsible for around 2 to 3 percent of the global carbon footprint. At the same time, ICT also can, can substantially reduce the environmental impact in sectors such as smart grid, smart buildings, smart logistics, or smart mobility, in particular by optimizing or enabling entirely new and more energy efficient processes. The energy that could be saved has been estimated several times larger than the overall energy consumption of the ICT equipment. Accordingly to a study of, uh, from uh, McKenzie, ICT can help to reduce the global CO2 footprint by 15%. Firstly, by reducing its own energy consumption. Secondly, by providing IT solutions to reduce to reduce the general energy consumption in the industry. The PC technology used in the ICT sector is continuously improving their energy efficiency. By 2020, a five times larger CO2 saving could be, could be accomplished. How to achieve this? Next slide, please. For example, all companies in Germany, uh, medium and large size enterprises with over 250 employees and over 50 million euro revenue are balanced and a balance sum of 43 million euro have to provide their energy auditing results according, accordingly to the DIN EN 16247-1 not later than December 5 this year. This audit has to be repeated every four years to provide the results on the improvement according to the EU Energy Efficiency Directives. 
The EU energy efficiency directives established a set of binding measures to help the EU to reach its 20% energy efficiency target by 2020. Under this directive, all EU countries are required to use energy more efficiently at all stages of the energy chain from production to its final consumption. All EU countries were required to, to implement this directive into their national laws by, the last, by last year June. The European Commission recognized the potential of deploying ICD to achieve the energy efficiency directives. So if we go to the next slide, here we can see that, uh, that data centers have a big impact on the energy consumption in ICT. The related ICT infrastructure is a big contributor to the eco footprint. The question is, how can we reduce the energy consumption in data centers? If you look at this diagram from top down, we see 5% reduction can immediately be achieved by just eliminating not required data and switch off PCs and servers which are in idle mode. Another 15% reduction can be achieved by replacing older IT equipment with latest green embedded computing technologies, which significantly can reduce overall power consumption and cooling requirements and free up additional valuable factory floor space. It may seem financially not wise to replace IT equipment before it has been fully depreciated. However, latest generation embedded industrial computing technology can offer considerable big advantages such as lower energy consumption and space saving installations capability. These features combined with additional two or three times better computing performance will compensate for the loss of asset value. The use of modern smart cooling equipment and heat exchangers combined with effective energy management tools in data centers will allow to approach another 20% of energy saving. Last but not least, fertilization is another pr a proven method to improve the enterprise energy efficiency by 35%. Some facts we will see on the next slide. Yeah, um, fact number one, of course, in virtualization, servers use energy and give off heat, whether they are in use 100% or in time of 50% of the time. Fact two, the difference between a um, system which is under 100% usage or in idle mode, uh, the, the heat generation and heat consumption is not really significant. And the fact number three is a server that is only 50% utilized will actually cost as much to run as a server that is fully utilized. So virtualization allows multiple applications workloads to run on a single multi-core server and will have a number of benefits we just have seen. Let me just summarize. Data center energy consumption can be improved considerably by installing latest energy efficient industrial computing equipment and by improving airflow management to reduce cooling requirements. In addition, server virtualization and investing in remote computing management will pro provide additional energy savings. So this is my part, so um, Greg, if you can go to the next slide. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for, for your part. Uh, the question that I would like to ask you is about the contribution from Advantech in green factory IT development. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm happy to uh, answer this question. Of course, in the early stage of PC-based automation, Advantech IPCs and panel PCs already 
have been designed accordingly to the Energy Star regulations. Today, of course, Advantech industrial computers and high performance servers, uh, green design, do benefit of over 30 years of experience in embedded PC technology of Advantech. To fulfill the green factory IT requirements, IPC and server products are designed and equipped with the latest power management technologies like 80 plus power supplies, digital power controllers, including management software like SUSE Access to reduce the energy con consumption in ICT. Uh, in the next presentation from my product team, you will receive more detailed information about this technology and product offering from Advantech. Next slide. Okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you for a part. Uh, we would like to move to the next presenter. It's Grace Yu, Intelligent Systems Product Sales Manager. Uh, and Grace will tell you a little bit about Grantex industrial IPs and industrial several platforms. Grace, the floor is yours. Uh, okay, thank you. Please uh, turn to the next slide. Uh, Good afternoon, I'm Grace from Intelligent System Group. Before talking about the benefits, uh, let us take a look on what Advantech Intelligent Systems do, and then goes to the next generation green design overview. Intelligent System Group starts from general Redmond IPC, which is what we offer the most recently with manufacturing automation, factory automation applications, even more on computing platform of a traffic, medical, and marine industry. After that, industrial server demand grows. Combined with industrial storage, building a strong back-end systems for modern industry. We also have some front-end computing platform in vertical market, such as vision automation, wayside control, and on-trend application. So this is the product offering that we uh, provide for several vertical markets, which is uh, on the slide you can see on the top of the slide. We have video, cloud, uh, machine builder, and also traffic control applications. And then let's go to the next slide. In the past, we gathered uh, some customers' needs and requirements. After that, we may get at some new features for next generation IPC. In this slide, blue one shows the requirements and the green one is the feature of the Ventec building. The first requirement is energy saving. There are two aspects. First is to consume the energy when it is required. When in idle mode, the system should not lower down the energy consumption. This requirement transfer to the feature as compact size and the short depth chassis, low TDP processor support, and the smartphone control. Special highlight for the short depth chassis. As we know that the general Redmond is put in a cabinet. The depth is usually around 450 to 500 millimeter. But the depth, uh, short depth uh, chassis is only around 350 millimeter, which is much shorter. Mm. As we know that the compact system larger the gap between chassis and the back of the cabinet, making the cable routing space bigger and the lower energy consumption in cooling system. The other aspect of energy saving relates to latest mem memory technology, DDR4 support from Skylake. Desktop solutions start to support the technology, making lower consumption computing possible. The second requirement is high energy transfer rate. Uh, in this segment, we adapt 80 plus power supply, making the energy transfer rate higher. And the last requirement, we build the intelligent energy management function with intelligent system module to make a, a efficient monitoring and the management on the energy status. Next slide, please. Um, here are the three-level energy saving process. 
decreasing energy consumption by CPU, memory, and the cooling system. The first level is to uh, decrease energy consumption by CPU. For Intel Core i technology, not only 65 watt products, but also 35 low TDP processors. The processors keep the same cache size and core quantities, but lower down energy consumption and base frequency. When the computing does not relate to heavy graphic processing, just choose the low TDP version to achieve energy saving. The second level is the DDR4 memory support. For DDR4, the technology lowered down the input voltage, make, making 37% of the power consumption decreasing. From Q4 2015, Intelligent System Group started to provide ATX PMIC solutions with Intel Core i and DDR4 supports. The last level, the third level, is the smart fan control. Smart fans in indicates the fan can sense the peripheral temperature and adjust the fan speed. When it is in idle mode, the system do not need full speed fan to cool down. The fan lower down the speed automatically, decreasing energy consumption. Compared to full speed all the time, no matter in full load computing or idle mode computing, this definitely saves energy make the industrial computing more green. And the uh, next slide, please. Uh, in this slide, uh, let's talk about the uh, benefits of 80 plus power supply. First, you may have a question, what does 80 plus means? As we know that a uh, power supply transferred AC power to DC power. During the transformation, some of the energy may become heat and waste. In other words, the higher transfer rate, the less waste. We can take a look at the right-hand side picture. Before, we used the power supply average 68% of the transfer rate. To achieve 500 watt output, input power should be 736 watt, which means 236 watt become heat and waste. Compared to 68%, if raise the power supply transfer rate, it only uh, raised the transfer rate to 80 percent. It only six, uh, 625 watt input is enough. The total power consumption saves is around 111 watt. The power supply with more than power, more power transfer rate. Uh, the power supply with the transfer rate more than 80 hundred. 80% uh, and of the, lo the loading of 20%, 50% and the full loading is called 80 plus. Uh, this feature also saves energy too. The last slot. slide, next slide. Uh, the last but not least, the slide shows how Advantage Intelligent System module helps customers doing the power management. Uh, the intelligent system module offers three benefits. The first one, it detected both system and the board level temperature, fan speed, power status, and the board voltage information. Then the information are integrated and provide the warning message into the chassis from panel. This makes the indicate more precise. The module monitoring the CPU system temperature and provide instruction to system as well as CPU cooler to achieve smart fan function using energy when you need. The most important benefit. All the information will also send to the cloud. Users do not uh, users doing remote detection and management from Advantech software program which is called SUSIS. One system encounter reliability issues or any other accidents, user can get the first-hand information fast even he or she is far away from the equipment. This helps for correct and in-time decision and the diagnosis. Uh, that's all my presentation. Thank you, thank you, Grace. We all, you. I also have the question for you. Uh, after getting energy saving information for next generation IPC server, uh, what products will our company, Advantech, offer to the market? 
Uh, okay, please uh, turn to the next page. Uh, yeah. On this slide, uh, please uh, look at that table that I made. Here is the feature product and, and the availability summary. For sure depths, here we have ACP 4020. It is a 4U mount with only 350 millimeter depths, which saves 27% of the space compared with other 4U chassis. For all of Advantech ACP IPC products, 80 plus power supply support. For ACP series, systems and control and smart, fan, smart power management solution are built in. As for a low TDP processor, it started many years ago for Sandy, has, uh, Sandy Bridge to Haswell platform, even like a Skylake platform in the future. Uh, the features are all available now, but the last, the most important, I listed the board level products with DDR4 support. The products plan to launch uh, the end of next month one after another to the end of Q1 2016. That's my answer. Okay. Thank you, Grace. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Uh, you. Next presenter is Marco Zampoli, Industrial Computing Product Sales Manager Europe. And Marco will tell us a little bit about how green is profitable. Marco, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Thanks a lot, Greg. Next slide, please. So, uh, I would like to start from what is uh, happening today. As uh, every of you know, industry is moving back to Europe. This means that uh, uh, the production, the real production of machine automation and process automation is becoming again more and more important. This is bringing to us a lot of new opportunity and new challenge, but we always need to take care that the energy, the cost of the energy is much higher in Europe than in the other countries. For example, in China, we can estimate about 30%. So the question we need to answer today, and I will try to provide you the answer, is how to be competitive. Next slide, please. This is just a summary of what we are speaking about, the energy. Paul was mentioning about the normative and the law that we must be able to fulfill. But it is even important to understand how an energy reduction is able to bring to increase the margin of our product. Here you can find a table that has been made by a university where you can see if we are working on the energy reduction, how we can increase our margin. The good point is that the payback period is really low. It is within one year. This means that we can really, really have something profitable and, and in order to make our product winning. Next slide, please. But how? How Advanta can help you with the edge computing? For sure, we can have a dual approach. The first approach is try to revamp all the system that before was done with the big system and not power efficiency system. Advantage e Automation Computing Platform is providing you a wide portfolio of solutions with high-end computing platform like Core i7, dual core or quad core. This means that what before was really huge and not power efficiency, now can become a small PC with files. This means green and efficient. The second approach is about the monitoring and the control system. We know that it is not possible to make efficient, efficient uh, complete production line. Most of the time, our product, our small embedded product, can be really in the field, controlling and monitoring the system making the command of this product more efficient. Next slide, please. And this is just the answer, the technology answer that we are providing. First of all, we are providing, as you remember, powerful CPU. So you will see that we are offering up to Core i7, starting from an Atom quad core, up to Core i7. 
Furthermore, we will see what, that we are just selecting SOC CPU, this means system on chip. Why? Because in this way we can really have lower power consumption. It can be really, really a great enhancement despite the performance. So performance are increasing, but we are still able to provide green computing, better. Then green solution, because at the moment we are, we are just focusing on the CPU, not at all. All the components of our solution are green. This brings to the fact that one HMI can dissipate just 18 watt before you need to consider that a typical HMI 10 years ago was about 50 watt, so you can understand which, is, which are the advantages. Second, it is even important to improve reliability. So all this green design or this green attention that we have, we are bringing a more and more reliable system. Furthermore, don't forget about IDOR technology, that is a modular technology that is able to bring competitive because we can crop in one system several functionality and we can decide time by time what we need in the system. Next slide, please. Here, it is just an explanation what we were speaking about system on chip. Before the typical architecture in edge computing, so really in the field, was a CPU, a north bridge, and a south bridge. So three components in order to have a computing platform. This was bringing for a minimal TDP of 45 watt. Now we are just selecting, selecting system on chip, so that not anymore a north bridge or south bridge. The CPU is able to manage everything needed from the internal resources up to the external I.O. This brings the following. We can have a Core i3, Core i5, or Core i7 with a TDP of only 15 watt and an Atom quad core with a TDP of just 10 watt. So we are improving performance. We will see some graph after. But again, here you have the fact that we are improving the energy consumption. Next slide. This is just an, another explanation about the CPU. Let's focus on the Core i. As you can see here, we are speaking about Intel, and we are just focusing on the latest technology, in particular on the ultra low voltage solution. This is bringing more CPU power, 30% more respect to the previous generation, with a really, really low power consumption. So increasing the performance and decreasing the power just using the latest technology available. Next slide, please. Here, I would like just to have an overview about the second most famous family in open computing, the Atom family. Here again, we are using just the latest Atom uh, solution that is called Patel architecture. This is uh, bringing really low TDP, just 10 watt, but we are uh, even able to improve our performance. So as I was telling you, the key point is that we are able to crop what in the past were done by several systems in one system with obvious power consumption reduction. Next slide, please. And here is a good example about what we are offering. This is our complete new series of panel PC for industrial usage. As you can see, the, the Technology is uh, providing a solution from 15 inch up to 19 inch, so a complete portfolio. First of all, it is energy saving. Second of all, it is a powerful CPU because we are using Beitel quad core. Second, it is a wide operating temperature. So even if we are offering rugged device, we are offering rugged, powerful and green device. Rugged means that they can easily operate from minus 20 plus 60 degrees. Next slide, please. And here again, I decided to provide you all the information about what is going to happen. 
So Atom is a system on chip. So as you can see from this middle picture, the CPU is providing all the connection needed. This means smaller board, fewer components, more efficient components. But beside, again, you can have really, really high performance. We can think about 388% more CPU and 177% compared to the previous generation. This is really bringing a new, a new uh, standard. So just before we were speaking about standby consumption of 18 watt in standard use, if we are loading the CPU up to the maximum, with the 17 inch we are able to achieve 30 watt power consumption. That is really a new trend technology, a new green uh, target. Next slide. Yes, next slide is my question, Marco. So, uh, if you can tell us how Advantech is enabling a greener production. Yeah, for sure, Craig. Can you please go to the next slide? This is just a slide providing you an overview of all the products that are using the technology we are discussing about. So, the greener technology is going through both the operator panel both about the HMI, both about on the embedded system. So the good point is that we are increasing the power consumption, uh, we are increasing the power of computing, but we are decreasing the energy consumption. I would like to provide you a really nice example about how we can really improve. So next slide, please. This is uh, something that is happening in a lot of factory, in a lot of companies, and this is bringing really a lot of results. Usually we have a process automation that is using our embedded PC, and then we have a quality control that are stationed between the process automation able to control the quality of the system. Why this was done? Simply because the power computing of a system was not able to withstand both the production task and both the quality task. With the technology we are bringing on the market and with the advantage of the usage, for example, widescreen and multi-touch, we are really able to crop together two systems. This means nothing more uh, devices dedicated to process and the devices for uh, dedicated to quality but just one that is able to do both. Here we have the computing platform able to have a good solution in terms of energy efficiency and wonderful solution in terms of usability. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, Marco. Thank you for the inter interested part. Uh, our next speaker, the last but not least on our list, is uh, Frank Leuf. Frank is Industrial Connectivity Product Sales Manager for Europe. Uh, he will be our last presenter, and after his presentation, we will have the Q&A session. Frank, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm Frank from iConnectivity Group. As we have learned from Paul, Grace, and Marco before about system technology and about the 20% energy savings until 2020 in Europe, and also looking at the in, uh, IoT and Industry 4.0 requirements and trends in the market, the topic of energy efficient Ethernet is perfectly supporting this story here. Let's see how energy efficient Ethernet can fulfill all these requirements and let us learn what energy efficient Ethernet is, how it works, and what benefits it can provide to us and to the environment. I will call it triple E from now on, I'm not saying energy efficient Ethernet a hundred times. Let's make that makes my life easy. But first, before we go there, let's have a quick look at the history. It all started with green Ethernet uh, invented by some vendors, and uh, that was 2008. And from 2010, um, the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, IEEE, invented the standard. IEEE 802.3 AZ, which was defining the energy efficient Ethernet. 
Why saving energy on land ports? What, what was the story behind this? Well, the electricity demand by the ICT sector for industrialized countries is between 5 and 10 percent of the total electricity demand, reveals the ITU World Summit on the Information Society. Roughly 50 percent of this electricity is just wasted by equipment that is powered on but in idle mode. The Triple E standard defines mechanisms and protocols intended to reduce the energy consumption of network links during periods of low or no utilization by just transitioning interfaces into a low power state. It enables system designers to save more than just, uh, just the Ethernet interface energy. Triple E also enables the communication of energy utilization information between link partners so the, uh, the IEEE standards defines the method to reduce power consumption on a network port without interrupting the network connection itself. Let's have a look at the real power consumption of the network devices. While computers like laptops, servers, UPS and other IT devices consume a large amount of power for their operation, networking equipment like switches or network interface cards, every computer has one, and so on, are not really far behind this consumption. It is estimated that networking devices consume about 10% of the total power consumed by IT equipment, 10%. With more and more switches and NICs being added, network interface cards like devices being added to the network based on Internet of Things and Industry 4.0, um, the power requirements for network devices are sure to go up, right? So this is this is this is sure. More more devices, more power consumption. One more factor that is contributing to the power increase of network devices is increasing capacity. Switches and network interface cards in devices are transitioning from 100 megabits to gigabit Ethernet, and uh, the network switches at the data centers, as we have learned from Paul before, is slowly moving to 10 gigabit connections. Higher capacity always comes with higher power requirements, irrespective of whether the devices are used to their full capacity or not, as we have also seen in Paul's uh, uh, presentation before. These were among many factories that led the IEEE to convene and formulate the H02.3AZ standard, energy efficient Ethernet. If network devices, no matter from which vendor, comply to this standard, the power consumption per port will decrease significantly. All right, next slide, please. Let's have a look uh, at what energy efficient Ethernet is, how it works, and what benefits it provides to us. What is energy efficient Ethernet? The IEEE 802.3A set standard is a symmetric protocol that enables network ports to switch between higher power state, the data mode, and lower power state, the LPI mode, in response to whether data has been transferred, which is active state, or not, then we are in idle state. This technology is called LPI, low power idle, which is actually a low energy consumption state that can be used during periods where there is no link utilization. It should be noted that the IEEE standard defines how LPI is communicating between systems, but not why or when. These decisions need to be left to the application itself. How does it work, energy efficient Ethernet, actually? Each PHY on a network port, on a network interface card, or on a switch port, advertises its triple E capability during the auto negotiation when a link is being established. Most, most ports communicate with each other, negotiate the speed, and then they also ne negotiate the, I, the, the triple E capability. If the device phi at both sides of the link supports triple E, the, the, uh, op they operate in triple E mode and save the energy. Even if one of them does not support the triple E standard, they operate just in normal legacy mode and do not save energy, but still work in normal, in normal mode. Triple E compliant devices use a modified static logic design in order to transcend to low power idle mode when no data is flowing through them. That's just 
as simple as that. The advantages of the energy efficient Ethernet are very clear now. Triple E is reducing the total power consumed per port and saves a lot of energy on the long run for organizations with large amounts of installed network devices. The Triple E is very effective on edge devices like computers, endpoint devices, edge switches, and so on, and can save a lot of power as a utilization pattern generally consists of long periods of silence and a few traffic bursts at almost full capacity. The triple E standard does not transition to a lower bandwidth or a lower throughput on the port to achieve power saving, but just shuts it down or puts it up again. So gigabit links remain gigabit links at full performance, for example. The triple E operates on standard base D interfaces on twisted pair copper wiring and supports all speeds like 100, uh, 10, 100 megabit fast ethernet, gigabit ethernet, and even 10 gigabit ethernet. So this is also future proof and no limitation in bandwidth. And last but not least, the triple E is backwards compatible also with non triple E interfaces as we have learned before. Uh, just works on the normal uh, connectivity so organizations can upgrade their networks gradually on the go. All right, let's have an application example on a switch about what we've just learned. Next slide, please, Greg. Looking at the slide, showing us an application example in two ways. Looking at the lower one, we have a five port switch just an unmanaged switch with one port active. That means one port is connected to another device, which is also capable of, of, uh, of uh, performing triple E. So energy efficient ethernet can save here up to 60% of the power consumption of the switch compared to a non triple E switch. And looking at a more realistic uh, situation, four ports on a switch are active. That means four network interface cards are connected to four ports on the switch and all devices supporting triple E, the saving can still be up to 36%. In the end, the simple triple E technology helps to save approximately one third of the power consumption of a well-loaded switch in this case here, which is without triple E, just wasted unnecessarily. This is pure money for companies and also helps to get to the point of 2020, the 20% 20 um, um, energy waste reduction uh, uh, controlled by the European Union. All right, next slide, please. Let's see what Advantex energy efficient Ethernet switches are about. These switches are the new generation of technology with triple E design. They feature green solutions that automatically adjust power consumption by utilizing the IEEE protocol as we've just learned. To get optimal bandwidth, for example, for video streaming, data traffic, Advantage switches are designed with VIP ports. The VIP ports, um, users with VIP ports, users can gain maximum performance for multimedia streaming preferred through prioritized bandwidth settings. So I can have VIP ports to prioritize communication per port. The wide power input range from 8.4 to 52.4 volt DC is dedicated to operate in areas of unstable power and also rugged environments in the industry. The switches also provide an event and or an alarm in case of a power failure or loop detection. In addition, the energy efficient Ethernet switches, TroView switches, are supporting the convergence of factory networks and IT networks. ProView is an unmanaged switch providing diagnostics using, for example, Modbus TCP as a control protocol connecting to a SCADA system, and on the other side using FNMP to communicate to the IT layer and providing diagnostic information to these both systems as an unmanaged switch. ProView switches use uh, ProView switches use port-based quality of service for deterministic data transmission. This allows to prioritize data traffic coming over dedicated ports and delays the less immediate, the necessary data 
over the remaining parts, prioritizing quality of service. The switches are designed using the highest quality components to enable employment in extended temperatures from minus 40 to plus 75 degrees, along with EMS level 3 protection to repeal the electromagnetic interface uh, for the harsh industrial environment. The ProView switch family from Advertex, right? Okay. Next right. slide. Thank you. Well, yeah, that's that's my question here. Uh, Preview saves energy and also provide diagnostic as an unmanaged switch. So, how does the preview combine all of this? If if you can tell us a little more about this this one. All right. Let's put this together. What I just said, and let's use the slide. Uh, the next slide. Just switch to the next slide, please, and let's have a look at this uh, sketch. It is very simple, actually, looking at the ProView technology. ProView is the unmanaged switch equipped with the best functions to ensure a cost-effective and high-quality technology with more than 45 different models in terms of board configuration. It ensures reduction of power consumption up to one-third of a normal switch by using the triple E energy-efficient Ethernet protocol, as we have seen, and uh, at the same time, ProView maximizes machinery uptime by providing diagnostics to both factory SCADA as well as to IT networks by using the de desired communication protocol, protocol for each party, SNMP for IT, Modbus TCP and other industrial Ethernet protocols for the factory floor. And at last, all that is available at the, at the effective cost level of an ordinary unmanaged switch. This is ProView the unmanaged switch with diagnostic and green energy support. That was actually it. Thank All you right. Much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you for your part.